T-minus one minute, 30 seconds away from a sunrise liftoff. CBRS is reporting air drop out on all systems. Stand by one. We were ready to go, and I'd been there just six months before, so I knew what was coming up. Coming up for a go for auto sequence start. 10, 10 9, 8, 7. Six seconds prior to liftoff, the main engines ignite on the shuttle. And they come up to full thrust during a six second run up, and then when the computers check everything, at zero, they light the solid rocket motors, and that's a commit to flying. You're going to go somewhere, and you hope it's orbit. I was mentally counting down five, four, three, two, one in my head. Three, two, and you're waiting, bracing yourself mentally and physically for the big kick at liftoff. One, and have main engine cut off. So we're looking out that hatch window, and you see the gantry swaying back and forth outside. Well, that's odd. And then you realize, oh, yeah, we're going back and forth. All of your flight plan training for what you're going to do in orbit is out the window, because now you might have to scramble out of the orbiter in just a few seconds to save your life. When the engine started up, the sensors saw something they didn't like. The first thing everybody wants to know is, what was the failure? The question is, how long will the hold be? And that depends on the failure mechanism. You don't know whether down below you there's a fire or a, an explosion that's about to take place, or whether it's already climbing up the sides of the, the shuttle stack. You're worried about the fact that there's 500,000 gallons of liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen in the fuel tank just a few feet away from where you're sitting. You've got the solid rocket motors. If one of those ignites, you know, it's over.